This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work with another Wolf Responds. I want to talk to you today about an issue that's been very important for many millions of people and is so as I speak. It's this matter of student debt, the trillions, because that's what we're talking about, of dollars that have had to be borrowed by young people in the United States who want an education, who want to become more productive, more creative in the work they do, in the life they lead. But the problem is in our society that that requires going into debt. It's a big topic. I don't have the time here to go into all aspects. But we have a new arrangement. I'm going to talk about some of the key aspects. And then at the end of this short video, if you would like another one on some of the other aspects, you'll be able to let us know and we'll go ahead and do it if enough of you do. So let me jump right in with the aspects we are going to cover. First of all, this program of President Biden to relieve student debt of $10,000 for many young people and $20,000 for a few is not going to change the basic problem. It really is a Band-Aid on a very serious wound and therefore doesn't hurt and it'll help, but it's not adequate to the problem. Here's the problem in a nutshell. We don't pay people enough in our culture to enable them to afford to get the education that would make our economy work better, would make their lives better, would make the lives of the rest of us better. A better educated population is more productive, more creative, more fun to be part of. But we are making it difficult. And we're not changing that by what the president has done. He isn't bringing down the price of higher education, not at all. And he isn't changing the basic economics of the mass of our people to help them afford an education. In other words, this is not a solution to the basic problem, and it should have been a solution that's certainly what we need. The second issue I want to talk about is the gross unfairness. Let's be really clear about the simple economics. You're sitting next to a student in a university classroom. That student comes from a comfortable or rich family, pays the $50,000 or whatever it costs per year with a check, end of story. You and I come from more difficult families in terms of their finances. They have to borrow. Yeah, borrow. And you all know what that means. You pay off your student loan like you pay off a mortgage or a car uh, loan that you take out to buy a car over several years, which means you don't just end up paying the 50000 that it costs to pay uh, for the college education. You pay the extra interest year after year. The same education that the person next to you gets, you pay many thousand dollars more for. Why? Because you don't have enough to pay for it in the beginning. In other words, you and the person next to you get the same education, get the same credits, get the same degree, but the rich one pays way less than you have to pay. That is so grossly unfair. It's kind of crazy. We're making the poor pay more for the education they and everybody else needs them to have. That is a crazy system that the president could have and should have dealt with. And now we come to the third thing I want to talk about. Some of the social consequences of having debts at this level and relieving them so modestly, 10,000 out of the many th tens of thousands that millions of our fellow citizens carry. Here are some of the social consequences you ought to think about. If you make college so expensive that people have to go into debt and pay out all that extra in interest, you know what you're doing? You are conveying to people, maybe you ought to rethink going to college. It's too expensive for you. You're too poor. You have to borrow. You're going to pay more. A lot of students are not going to go, and we're going to suffer as a nation. 
all over the world it's understood that more and more education is necessary to be successful in a modern economy. The United States is disincentivizing young people to get the educations they want, they need, and that will benefit all of us. We are, as a nation, therefore, shooting ourselves in the foot in terms of our economic futures. You're also creating a generation, it's already with us, loaded up with debt that postpones marriages, that prevents relationships, that postpones having children, that postpones buying a home, making all those things impossible. I mean, the difficulties we're creating are our own making. We don't have to do it. Let me quickly remind you that most of the countries in Europe don't charge anything like what we charge in this country for education and therefore do not have the student debt problem we do. That's an American exceptionalism you might not have thought of. As I said, we don't have time to go into more aspects of the student debt problem, but there are important ones. The way, for example, big business doesn't arrange to only give a little bit of relief. The tax cut of 2017 didn't ask how needy people were. And yet we have Senator Lindsey Graham telling us it's unfair that a few students might get help who don't deserve it, who don't need it. How interesting. Selective application of neediness when it's convenient. These and other aspects, if you're interested, I can go into and would go into, and if you're interested, respond to the poll in that way. And as usual, let me end by saying to you, if interventions like this, if bringing these issues up strike you as an important contribution to the national conversation, then please share this video with others. Be our partner is the best way I know how to put it. And of course, if you can help us financially as well, you know how to do that. Go to our website. It will help us that way, too. Many thanks. Richard Wolf for Democracy at Work.